Welcome to Arts and Ideas. Our mission is to highlight some of the cultural events in our community and to focus on some of the many artists whose works and ideas enrich our lives. Your host for Arts and Ideas is Sue Swinan. Sue is a well-known artist and educator, having taught painting and design at the Worcester Art Museum for over 20 years, as well as courses in painting and visual communications at Clark University. She has exhibited widely on the East Coast and has been running lively art critiques in this area for years. Hello again, and welcome to another a session of Arts and Ideas. Our guests this time are Scott Erb and Donna Default, and their husband and wife team of photographers who are living in the Worcester area. And they have a few interesting projects coming up, and we thought we would uh, take this time to introduce them to this community. You're living in the Worcester area, and uh, how long have you been in Worcester? We've been here for approximately 10 years now, and uh, moved out here from Rochester, New York. Uh-huh. Yeah. Is that where you met? We did meet in Rochester. Uh, I went to RIT for fine art photography. Which is the Rochester Institute. Yep, yeah. and uh, where I was interning was a company called Light Impressions. While great I was company. RIT. Yep. For those of you who are looking for great photography supplies. Yeah, good archival products. Um, and when I graduated, they hired me on to work in the call center. And uh, I was a manager there for a couple of years, and Scott came to work at the call center there. And that's how we met. So you're both photographers, but you do more, um, your work is more private at this point and work, fine art work that you're doing for yourself. We're going to show some examples of it later. Uh, and you also work as a partner with Scott. And Scott, you do more of, um, you do a lot of commercial uh, advertising photography to pay the bills, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> and you also have some wonderful fine art work that uh, I've seen in various shows. Mm -hmm. um, so as a team, you you have herb photography. Right. And I understand you do a lot of the uh, behind the scenes work. Yep, a lot of the scheduling, a lot of the you know pre-production stuff that needs to get arranged. I also do all the fun administrative duties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know you help, uh, you both originated a very interesting um, group in the Worcester area that I find fascinating, at the, the, meet, the concept of the meetup group. Mm -hmm. uh, could you tell us about that or whoever's? Sure. Uh, about five years ago, uh, I was, we, well we were, we didn't know a lot of people at the time. We, uh, we didn't have a lot of uh, friendships in the area. Uh, a lot of our friends who were close to us had moved away and uh, I love photography and I thought it would be great to meet other photographers in the area. So oddly enough I was online and I stumbled across meetup.com yep. and I thought wow that's really interesting you know it's like all kinds of things you can meet up uh, about uh, and, but they didn't have uh, a photography meetup group here locally. They had one in Boston, but I thought, yeah, I don't want to go out that far. Uh, so I thought I'd start one here. And the original concept was that we would uh, have probably around four or five photographers. We would get together at a cafe or something and just talk shop. Yeah, hang out and look at each other's photographs. Yeah, and, uh, and, and that's what happened initially. We had about four or five photographers. We sat around, looked at each other's work, and got inspired. Uh, but it just grew from there. Yeah, yeah, like within six or seven months, like 15 people started showing up, and then 20 people started showing up, and now the meetups can be up to like 40 people at a time. Isn't that 60. wonderful? Yeah. And That's it's amazing. open. It's open to uh, the community. Oh, yeah. Yes. And so, you know, if you're a photographer and you want to meet other photographers and learn what they're doing and how they're doing it and, and where they're showing and how they're making a little money, where they're buying their stuff, all this kind of information, they can just go to the uh, meetup and, and meet new friends, too. Right, and we do a lot of fun stuff, too, like click and shoots, where we just pick um, a day and a time and a place 
and we meet as a group with our camera gear and all of our stuff and we wander about. It's not a parade, it's just a group of us getting together and kind of sneaking off and then coming back together and sneaking off and coming it's back together. It's such a nice idea. Yeah. I, I went on one of those up to the falls. Um, yep, Turner Falls. Turner, Turner falls. falls. Beautiful And place. it was a great day. Yeah. I enjoyed it very much. And again, meeting all the people that were involved and so forth. Yeah. yeah, but the beauty of it is you get to create new friendships. And yes. We have met so many great Amazing people. Amazing people. So, Scott, you're doing uh, <laughs> a lot of commercial advertising work. We have a few examples of it here in the studio. And um, how do you uh, compare the work that you do commercially and the work that you do privately for yourself? Um, you know, I. I uh, I'm interested in that relationship. Sure. The, um, I kind of split it in two different things. Uh, with the artwork, I create solely for myself. Uh, and the commercial work is done for the other people. We can call it commercial, commercial artwork. Commercial advertising. Yeah, commercial uh, <laughs> it's artwork. It's artwork. Sure. Uh, there's definitely a lot of talent involved in it and uh, artistic eye that goes involved uh, in, in with doing it. and. Uh, What's interesting is with the commercial advertising, I'm usually giving, given a uh, sort of limitations to work within that a lot of times an art director will say, okay, we, we want this specifically. Like they give me an actual, uh, like a drawing. Yes. Say, we want this and we want it to look just like this. Yes. But as a photograph. So that makes... So they come with the completed concept. Exactly. And I have to create that for them. Yes. So that's the, the difference between being an artist and being a commercial advertising photographer, is that the artist, uh, my, uh, as an artist, I can create anything I want You come just up with me. your own concept. Yes, exactly. Where in the commercial advertising world, I have to work within their parameters. Yes. Uh, but also bring my own artistic view to it. So there's a, it's nice to be able to do both. Well, I, I was talking to you earlier, and I really liked something you said about, um, you know, that there are many restrictions in the commercial work, but those force you to be more creative yes. because you have to find new ways of solving problems or you have specific problems that you have to address. Absolutely. So it really requires being very creative. And, and, I, and I make the point of calling commercial work um, art as well, because, uh, you know, again, we could go into a long discussion about what art is, but, you know, I think that um, the, the pieces that I'm seeing behind me, for example, and maybe we can show some of those up close, uh, are definitely related to and having the same kinds of formal beauty and interest that your fine artwork has. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I like to try to, as much as I can, mix the two as, as much as possible. Mm -hmm. It's not always possible if I'm, I'm giving a, a specific layout, yeah. you know, but uh, if, if the client gives me enough freedom, and a lot of times they do, then I can be a little bit more artistic in my yeah. approach. And you're very <laughs> interested in the, f in the figure, the f human figure. Right. And I can see that photographs of, uh, uh, of models could be very much more easily related to the fine artwork than you d that you do, than you know photographing uh, food. food or something. <laughs> exactly, uh, you're not a landscape or still life photographer. You're you're a people photographer, right. and uh, primarily nude photography, which is directed very much toward the human the human body Figure, as right. the uh, expressive vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, how much of the work, do, how much time do you spend on commercial work as opposed to the photography, fine art? We spend more time on the commercial work, uh, mostly because that's our, our business. Uh, so good, you know, yeah. 50, 60, 70 percent of the time we're working on the commercial world. And uh, the rest of the time I'm working on art projects, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm working on one or finishing up one now. It's not 
specifically that type of work, but we'll talk about that later about yeah. the book project. Donna, do you go to the commercial shoots and help with the oh, setups? Oh yeah, and I tag along. I'm always and there. You're there with the I've, push pins and the. <laughs> I have all the little gadgets that he may need at the ready, but yes. I have I have a special superpower, which is my reflector. Uh -huh. um, if he, if he needs light, I'm there reflecting the light. Isn't in, it wonderful so. that you, as a professional artist yourself, can really be a help to him? Yeah, and we're definitely you're a team. A team. Yes. You know, he stands behind the camera and I do all the futzing and fritzing and whatnot and to make sure things look good, you know, when we're, we're actually taking the photograph. Um, so I, that's... I also depend on her, uh, her eye, you know, she, because she has a completely different way of seeing things. Yeah, she's so fine. Uh, I'll have her look at the images and she can say, you know, that looks okay, or maybe we use we can technical tweak this. terms like scooch it this way or smidge that <laughs> smidge way. Smidge that way. <laughs> yeah, you know. Like, so you're really on the same page and oh, the yeah. same wavelength, yeah. which is good. We make up words. The clients get confused, and then they, you don't have to worry about them understanding. <laughs> oh, it's, yeah, it's secret photo speak. Yeah. yeah. So, how much Photoshop do you use, like in commercial work and in and your fine arts work? Is that uh, something you? Uh, it. Yeah, I do. Uh, Photoshop is just in, in the commercial advertising world. It's just part of the daily life. Yeah. Uh, I mean, can even make if the legs just, much longer. You can, you do, can yeah, <laughs> you can do anything you want. In make, fact, make the eyes bigger. Yeah, the models uh, take don't off always the look moles and as perfect as as you think they do, and uh, that's just part of it. But you can create a lot more dynamic imagery with Photoshop. Yes. Uh, as simple as cleaning things up from uh, blemishes to creating whole new backgrounds and sure. popping in uh, and interesting he's, things. He's definitely an expert in Photoshop. I mean, I sit there and he'll he'll show me like the before and afters of whatever he did, and I'm like totally blown away. Yeah. And it's such an amazing tool. I I yeah. don't know what we would do without it. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to know if you found the fine arts work influencing your. Uh, commercial work or vice versa does that yeah I think is that ever a problem they or? do they help and sometimes hinder um, the technical because I shoot a lot more in the commercial world and advertising uh, the technical abilities that I've gained from that both uh, with my camera and lighting and Photoshop and things like that I'm able to move into the art world and really refine my imagery uh, and vice versa the um, imagery that I create uh, specifically with the figurative work, I can move into the commercial world. In fact, there's a shot over there uh, with the Aqua di Gio where I can use one of the figurative models uh, as a selling point for the Aqua di Gio advertisement. Uh -huh. So yeah, they do kind of help one another. Sometimes they hinder, but more, more often they help. Uh -huh. Um, I, I also think that it, um, I, both as a commercial and a fine art um, photographer, that you basically develop your own style. You know, you may have influences like Frazetta and Brahm and the pre-Raphaelites, but I think that eventually, as you keep doing more and more and more work, people start hiring you because you do have a particular style. Oh, absolutely. You know, because they like the way They're that you see. They're looking for a new way of saying the same old thing, you exactly. know, and making so, it fresh. So finding somebody with a unique vision that they can then use to kind of absolutely. either sell their product or absolutely. whatever it is. So I think that that's where, you know, kind of the influences came down and then you morph it into your own right. vision. You, you'll actually see in a lot of my work it tends to be dark. Uh, at least my, my dark work. Dark in terms of the actual tonality the or tonality, dark in terms lighting, of the psychology? Yeah, a little bit of more of the, the, the tonality and yeah. how we, I light things. So it's a dramatic lit, the yeah. dramatic lighting. I love dramatic lighting. Sure. It's, it's my, my favorite thing. However, that doesn't always work in the commercial advertising field. As you look behind, sure. there's uh, more open lighting. And they like they like things to be light and, o as you say, light. open and airy and... Mm -hmm. Some people do. Yeah, yeah, not always. But w of course, when you talk about lighting and uh, subtle, um, gradual tonal changes, that's what you can achieve with this dark lighting with the hot, with the... Uh, of course, I'm talking about stuff I'm not... No, no you're <laughs> right. No, that's exactly right. I like the subtle lighting. I, I enjoy... Yeah, where you can bring up every hair and pore and... Exactly. The skin really shows. Yes, and yes, it's, yes. It's just, just beautiful. Yes. Uh, and I find that's the best lighting that time. Well, you really are a craftsman. I mean, I've looked at your work in various shows, and you know your craft. Mm. 
and you know your craft. When I look at those things you've done of the uh, tools of your father, and they're just beautiful. And uh, again, I think you're both very formal in that you're interested in how it looks and the whole concept of beauty and whether the thing is compelling. You know, I always talk about beauty as that which is compelling, which you can't take your eyes off of kind of thing. And your tools are just as compelling as his nudes, you know, but they have that same kind of uh, formal beauty that finds the meaning in the the actual forms and textures and lines and directions. So yeah, you'll actually see a lot of her work um, in the future. And uh, she hasn't shown a lot, but she really is into the texture. She yeah. loves yeah. things with lots of texture, and you'll see that in her work. Donna, could I? Uh, I had a couple. I see you have a couple portfolios mm -hmm. that you brought today, and I would like to talk about how you present work to uh, a future client or a gallery sure. or and I thought this uh, portfolio was so beautiful yeah. and is, is this handmade yes this was um, handmade by Matt Jones yeah. um, he works actually local in Shrewsbury yeah. uh, at uh, the Green Dragon bindery yeah. on oh really yeah no and kidding so somebody could get a special folio and have bound certain drawings yeah, he or did this very specific for me and cool. yeah, an artist can go there and talk with them and uh, he's really great he works custom. with you our logo has this kind of swoosh through it and he just took that and did it in leather very beautiful and then when you open it up um, the sepia tone colors match kind of the sepia of the yes prints. very beautiful um, and then we just have each section in this beautiful vellum type yeah. material and then each, they're all triptychs, so there's three pieces per sheet. And um, when we bring this to a gallery or talk to someone about the work, this is kind of how we present it. We talk about the pieces in each grouping. And then, um, so this is more, this is the fine art portfolio. Yes, yes, yes. And there's just a, a large group of these. Now from this the one work. looks like it's, um, people are probably tantalized because we're not showing these, but we'll show some of these. These are, um, uh, the digitally manipulated ones that right. be become more symmetrical abstractions almost. Mm -hmm. Really beautiful. Yeah, that's something I've uh, worked in recently. A lot of my earlier work, figurative work, was pretty much standard. There's the form with the beautiful light. Uh, and that was more for me. Uh, a lot of the work that I had done in the past was uh, had been done by other people. It's, it's nothing new. But then I moved into the uh, the digital world and started creating these interesting manipulations. Mm -hmm. And then recently I've started doing uh, color. I, I didn't do mm -hmm. a lot of color work before and uh, using color and movement together. Mm -hmm. uh, I had hired a, uh, a woman uh, who was a model and a dancer. Her background was in ballet and we got some great images together. I saw those. They're sort of like Martha Graham with her flowing yeah. gowns. Yeah. And it gives you a sculptural effect that's very, uh, yeah. plus the fabric is full of air and form. Yeah, I wanted nice. to get movement in because a lot of my earlier work really didn't have that. It was, yeah, it was, it these are very static. sculptural, yeah, you know, they're exactly. very stable and sculptural. Mm -hmm. um, Which was great. Or like I objects. It. And I still love all the work that I've done previously. I just, I just think that it's, as an artist, you need to move forward and keep mm -hmm. uh, challenging mm -hmm. yourself and see where you can go. You know, mm -hmm. just, you know, and as long as you're happy with it and it's fun for you, I think it's great. Yeah. So we this is just a one way of presenting. This is more for commercial work. We have books made with images in them, and then the the person who we're showing or presenting the work to can either keep the book if they decide that's something that they want to keep on file, or we can um, just have it as a portfolio. You can see everything online, but sometimes it's nice to have the piece that you can kind of flip back and forth through. Since and we're mentioning online, uh, where can people see your work online? Well, they can see my figurative work at the, theintimateportrait.com. It's www.theintimateportrait.com. Uh, as far as my commercial work, they can go to www.herb photo.com that's e r b is in boy p h o t o.com is there a link from herb photo to the intermittent port intermittent uh, there is not we, uh -huh. we keep them separate uh, okay. only because people tend to have yeah. uh, 
a little bit weird confused. feelings about that. <laughs> yeah, <we're laughs> which also, is fine. It, it doesn't yeah. bother us. We're also on MySpace and Twitter and LinkedIn, LinkedIn and, and Facebook. You know, all the fun social networking sites too. That's cool. I definitely, yeah. definitely look us up there. So we've been looking mostly at Scott Herb's work, mm -hmm. but I, I would really like Donna. I know this isn't going to be the ideal way to show these, <laughs> okay. but uh, just to give people an idea of what kind of work you do. Um, this is a more formal way of presenting a portfolio to um, a is gallery. This, is this, does this, so this is a formal presentation box, or is that yes. what you call it? This is called a drop front box. You can get them at Light Impressions. A drop front box. Yeah. So Here. basically it's a box, but the front is not acid attached. Free. It's acid and, lig and, and lignin, lignin free. free. And everything has been matted and printed on metallic paper because that's what the tools are about, kind of the shiny metallic of them. So so these are, this is interesting too because people might not know, but this is like a book mat and the image is just stuck in there and uh, of course the mat protects the surface of the port of the photo as well, it right. raises the board up. And some people will title and sign each piece um, if they want to kind of, you know, be that specific about things. But and these were tools of your father's, weren't they? Yes, my dad had a garage. He was a hydraulics mechanic, and uh, you couldn't walk in his garage. So um, when he passed away, I wanted to create um, a memorial or a memento of what a lovely the, uh, idea. The pieces that were there. And oh, then, so these are all grinding heads, aren't they? Yes. yes. It looks like something you'd find on the beach. Yeah. It looks like uh, organic things, but they're all precision grinding instruments. So they're all still lifes of the yeah. tools. So it's a combination yeah. of what was there that he used on a daily basis and my interpretation mm -hmm. in a still life form. So and maybe. again, your craftsmanship is right up there, kid. <laughs> what I were you going to say, Scott? I was going to say, um, uh, a lot of times we didn't even know what these things were, not being, you know, uh, mechanics of any level. So it was really about the uh, interesting forms. Again, and it's the very formal use of shape and uh, texture and, yeah. yeah so. But I like the fact <laughs> that it has meaning beyond that as well, you know. Oh, yeah. A lot of people see um, art as therapy. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. They say that that's a way of expelling your demons and, or think. understanding them. And, right, right. And uh, people make art for all different reasons, that's for sure. Absolutely. And personal is just as good a reason yeah. as any. Yeah. Do you ever do any documentary? You know, I'm thinking about the content of your work. and. Do you ever do, uh, I know you do the very formal right. p nudes and all, but do you do any editorial or do uh, doc? I don't really do documentary. Uh, I do, however, do editorial um, type work, uh, which is, helps tell a story. Um, I'm currently working on a book project right now called uh, 20 Artists of Worcester and Their Working Spaces. And you got a grant to do that, right? I did. The Worcester Cultural Coalition uh, was nice enough to think that it was uh, worthy, and I think that was great, and they yeah, gave us a great grant. idea. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, it was uh, something very personal to me, and it was something that I was going to do anyway. But it was great to have that little extra. Um, so it's been uh, a great project. Yeah, it really has been. We've uh, met so many cool people doing this project. Yeah, it's two years in the making. Wow. And yeah. uh, what we would find an artist, and then ask them who they thought should be included in the book, and it just kind of went from person to person to person. It was definitely peer driven. Yeah. You know, definitely. And it was great. We got all these, having met all these wonderful artists and everyone was so gracious and kind, uh, it was amazing. And I'm really excited to show the book when it comes out. It's, it's going to be When great. does the book come out? Uh, well, we're going to have a show uh, on November 14th, uh, the opening. Uh, this is important. November 14th. Yeah. Right. Where is it? At the Davis Publishing, uh, at the, in the Printers Building in, in Worcester, and uh, and what? Where is that? The Printers Building. Uh, it's right down near the. Uh, <laughs> Please hold. That's it's okay. near the library, but it's. Crip um, sheets are good. It's called uh, the, the Davis, Davis Art, Art Gallery, Gallery, Printers Building, 44 Portland Street, third floor, mm -hmm. Worcester, Mass. And that's right behind the uh, theater, isn't it? 
Yeah, it's near the Hanover. Yeah, um, right behind the Hanover of, Theater. Um, yeah, and, and by the by library. library. And by, no, right near the library. Plenty of parking. There's yeah. plenty of parking. Yeah. Parking is good. It's going to be from 5 to 7 p.m. on November 14th. November 14th. And what will that show consist of? Well, it will show uh, 20 images of mine of each artist uh, in their spaces. Uh, a lot of people didn't really get to see where an artist creates their work, so this is part of that. Uh, and then we'll have one piece from each artist uh, along with the shot. Yeah. Uh, so there'll be 20 pieces of artwork too. It's it really sounds different and interesting. Well, you yeah. know, every artist was different and interesting in their own way. And yes. I, I cannot believe what is lurking in suburbia. I mean, we would walk into these studios and they were amazing. It was amazing talent just to uh, see how it's all created and the spaces that these people work in. I mean, sometimes... And how they some make do. Yeah, it's... <laughs> I yeah. mean, you have this preconceived notion of this big, airy, open space with big, you know, windows and stuff. And, and drop-down easels that yeah, you push a button. And you know, <laughs> and it's like each artist had a different idea of what the other artists had. And, yeah. you know, some people worked in their kitchens. Some people worked in their basements. Some people yeah. didn't have their if own space. you have space, to do you know? it, you find a way. Yeah, you know, and sometimes it was in their living room or whatever, and we just went in and looked at what was there and saw how their process was, and they were very uh, open to allowing us into their spaces and very gracious about um, letting us take up all their time. You know, one <laughs> of the reasons we wanted to do this program in the first place was because we felt there were so many wonderful artists out there. I know, 20 Just is such a limited away, number. Just working away, walk, you know, I'm sure that you could have included oh, another 50, 60, on whatever. And on and on. But oh, there are so many artists working away in their little space and just trying to make good work and Yes. So I think the project is a very, very wonderful idea. And I look forward to seeing the book and also the exhibition on the 14th of November that accompanies that. We're and really is that book going to be, I'm sure it's going to be available for sale. How yes. would people? Uh, we are going to, uh, we're going to have a website, which they, yeah. people will go to. It's not up yet. But the website will have a link to a direct sale through okay. online. Uh, Tell us the name of the book again, just in case people uh, missed it. 20 Artists of Worcester and Their Workspaces. Okay. Yeah. 20 artists of Worcester and their workspaces. Uh, well, it's been a pleasure talking with you, and thanks for coming. Sure. And Thank you for having thanks us. For yeah, being thanks here. for having us. And I look forward to the November 14th with the opening of the uh, book project yes. at uh, the Printer's Building in Yay. Worcester. This is Sue Swinand. Thanks for joining us. We hope to see you again soon with more arts and ideas.